Good morning. Hi. Happy New Year. <laughs> Can you believe it's 2015? A chilly one at that. And, and I'm absolutely honored to be here today, and I appreciate the opportunity to come and speak with you about Common Core. I love Ellie's title, The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, because there's good, there's bad, and there's ugly. And I think my perception of this and my concerns are some that are shared by a very large group in Arizona and across the nation of teachers, parents, administrators, and just citizens. So I appreciate the opportunity to give another side to what Donna was saying. I do agree with one of the things that she said right off, and, and that is that standards are not learning. We have found that out. Uh, we've had great standards. And, but that doesn't mean that children are learning in our classrooms. There are a lot of things that go into how children are learning, and it's not just telling them what it is they should know and be able to do. First of all, let me say that's what a standard is. It's simply a statement, a clear, concise statement of what we expect children to know and be able to do. Now, I would like to give you a little bit of a perception of historically in Arizona. Uh, Donna mentioned some of it. Um, in Arizona in the mid-90s, we began, like many states did, with trying to establish what it is that we felt our students needed to know and be able to do. At the time, I was a principal in Scottsdale, and then I was honored to be appointed to um, the associate superintendent for Arizona Department of Ed. And my primary responsibility was academics for K-12. That was a huge job. The first thing we needed to do was to establish the standards. And so we did that not in a closed door, in a dark hall somewhere. We got every teacher, principal, community person that we could get involved, we got involved in establishing Arizona's academic standards. We started with language arts. If I could go to the next slide. We started with language arts, and that involved reading, writing, listening, speaking, presenting. Hundreds of teachers, parents, again, community leaders, came together, and we did not do this in a vacuum. We looked at national standards that were written by the, the National Teachers of English, uh, National Council of Teachers of Mathematics. We looked at international standards. We worked very hard in this process, and the Arizona standards that were adopted were noted, uh, emulated nationwide, some of the best in the nation. We were very proud of those standards. Not only did we develop them the language arts and mathematics, history, social studies, science, technology, the arts, special education, uh, foreign language, health education. Across the curriculum, we developed state standards. And again, they were recognized and ranked and graded as being some of the best in the nation. Last week, I've had a little bit of a hard time finding some of our standards because <coughs> they were actually taken offline. But I did find uh, a set of standards. These were our standards for reading, kindergarten through 12th grade. And these were last uh, updated, these particular standards, in March of 2003. Which brings me to a point. The State Board of Education, nine members on the State Board, their job, one of their primary responsibilities, Title 15, Section 203, is to say what it is students in our schools in Arizona should know and be able to do. That's one of their jobs. I think when they went to the Common Core, they absolutely gave up that responsibility to some groups in DC, and we will get there. These are the writing standards. Kindergarten through 12th grade, excellent standards. Again, emulated, ranked very high across the nation. So I guess one of my concerns with Common Core is I honestly don't feel that we had needed to ever go down this rabbit trail. We had standards. They weren't perfect, and nor should they be set in stone and never changed. They were always to be looked at, upgraded, what needs to be changed about them. Let's talk to teachers, let's talk to principals. What do we need to do to make them better? That was the step the State Board should have done, not to go to D.C. and adopt national standards. Let's back up, um, go back in time a little bit to 2009. In 2009, Governor Brewer, along with then Superintendent Tom Horn, 
and the Mason Superintendent, uh, Dr. Michael Cohen, and Senator Rich Crandall went to D.C. along with other states, and they heard the <coughs> information that's been presented about Common Core. And they decided that, yes, Arizona needed to get into Common Core. 2010, in June of 2010, the State Board of Education for Arizona adopted Common Core. So they took our standards that had been written, vetted, updated, vetted again, um, lots of work put into these standards. And <coughs> teachers were doing, I think some of the results that we're seeing on the testing is also because of what we've done in our standards in Arizona. But what happened then, they adopted these standards, they shelved ours. And then in 2003, they changed the name from Common Core to Arizona College and Career Ready Standards. Nothing else changed about the standards, just the name. So let's go to the next. Uh, so where did Common Core from, come from? Donna mentioned the Common Core State Standards Initiative. It's really an oxymoron. These are not state standards. These are national standards. These standards were created by small groups of people. In fact, I was just reading an article that was on the Washington Post this week about the three-man team that created the mathematics. One of them is from Arizona, um, Dr. McCallum, who is at the U of A. He's one of the three-man team that created the mathematics. Yes, people have had an opportunity to comment on them, but they were written in a way that was not open. Uh, they were not vetted by a lot of people before they became what was commented on by teachers. CCSSI. A couple of groups we need to keep in mind with this, and those are the groups, the two primary groups that really got this going. And those are CCSSO and NGA. Donna mentioned NGA. NGA is the National Governors Association. They are a group, we all know who they are, you know, governors belong to the National Governors Association. CCSSO is a different group in that they are the Council of Chief State School Officers. So every state has one Chief State School Officer. Ours right now is John Huthenthal. At the time Common Core was adopted, it was Tom Horn. Um, next week it will be Diane Douglas. So every state has one. Some are elected, ours are elected. <coughs> Some are appointed by the governor. Some are appointed by the state board and other by the, others by the legislature. So it's a fair variety of ways that they become state school officers. My concern with this is that the CCSSO and the NGA have no accountability to us the taxpayers. We are the ones that fund our schools. The federal government funds about 10%. The rest is funded locally and by state. Half of our general fund goes to education. But yet now we have said to these two groups, CCSSO and NGA, you determine what it is our students need to know and be able to do. We've literally turned that over to some national groups have a huge concern with that because they're not accountable to us. The other group that you will see here, see here is Achieve Inc. And that group is the, the group that basically did the organization. They're the ones that found the people to write the standards. Uh, they are heavily involved in all of Common Core. And all of this was primarily funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So that's the, what I would like to talk about next. We can go to the next slide, Donna. <coughs> I think this is an interesting quote by Joy Pullum of Heartland Institute. It says, people who characterize Common Core as anything other than a national takeover of schooling are either unaware of these sweeping implications or deliberately hiding this information from the public. Now Donna said, this is not curriculum, these are standards. Standards drive the curriculum. These Common Core standards will tell us what will be taught in every school, excuse me, every school across the nation. So this is definitely sweeping change for our schools. Let me get a drink of water. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Donna, can you change that to the next one? Thank you. So who's financing Common Core? If you think about this going on nationwide, this has taken a lot of money to get this initiative going. 
In 2007, the Gates Foundation and Eli Broad pledged $60 million to the creation of national standards. From 2007 to 2012, the National Governors Association and CCSSO have received $27 million from the Gates Foundation for, this, for the Common Core uh, initiative. And the one that really gets me going is this final one, which is the U.S. Department of Education. Stimulus funds to the amount of $4.35 billion in race to the top funds to promote Common Core. And how have they done that? Because they've incentivized states to adopt Common Core. You do this, you get this. Anytime you incentivize, you know, that's going to drive, and that's just what has driven Common Core. There are some deficiencies with Common Core. I know Don and I would disagree on this. According to Dr. Sandra Stotsky, who is an expert in language arts, these standards are not internationally benchmarked. They're not research-based. They stress writing more than they stress, stress reading at every grade level. We used to have a lot of informational, uh, uh, more, more, um, more emphasis on literature and less on informational. The Common Core has switched that. There's more emphasis, emphasis on informational now than the uh, literature. Talk about the cost. When Arizona, <coughs> thank you, when Arizona went to um, DC, we received, I wouldn't say as a result of that, but as a result of our getting into Common Core, applying for a grant with Race to the Top, in phase three, Arizona received $25 million. Other states, I, I think pretty much all of those stimulus funds have been granted through Race to the Top, or most of them. The State Board of Education estimate they asked for, in order to implement Common Core, $131 million to implement Common Core from the State Board in the years, for the years 2000, fiscal year 2014 and 2015. And that does not include related costs for additional internet access and computers for testing. The group that really knows about the dollars is AASBO, Arizona Association of School Board Business Officials. They're the ones that handle the dollars in all of our school districts. They estimate, in order to implement Common Core, for instructional costs, $157 million. For internet and computers, $230 million, for a total of $387 million in Arizona alone to implement Common Core. That's a lot of money. It's a lot of money that could be going to other purposes in our schools and in our classrooms. So we can go to the next slide. What about nationwide? Ted McFarber is a friend of mine. He, uh, <coughs> has a, a group in Washington, D.C. called Accountability Works. He was commissioned to study what Common Core was going to cost us nationwide to implement. I think these figures are actually staggering. And I trust Ted on this because I know he's a real nerd and I know he's done his homework on this. For testing, $1.24 billion. Textbooks and instruction, $2.5 billion. For professional development, so that our teachers know how to teach these standards, 5.26 billion. And for technology, technology, 6.87 billion. That's a lot of technology that we're asking now to go into our classrooms. Almost $16 billion to implement Common Core nationwide. Now what could those resources do for our classrooms and for our teachers? Let's go to the next slide, thank you. So what's the state of the states with Common Core? I think, I think it's amazing, there's some very wise states out there that decided to not go along the Common Core route. Texas, Virginia, Massachusetts, which has excellent standards, Alaska, they chose to stay with their own. I wish Arizona had chosen to stay with their own and then make them better. States that did go along and then now are attempting to come back out of Common Core commitment, South Carolina, Oklahoma, Indiana, <coughs> and Louisiana. Louisiana Governor Bobby Jindal has just sued the federal government because of their um, 
saying in order to get these types of grants, you need to make this type of commitment to Common Core. Uh, a, a congressman there, David Bitter, has written legislation that is introduced in Congress that says that the federal government is to be prohibited from tying any type of incentives to programs for our schools. We're saying that you cannot get this particular money if you don't do this particular program. And I think we'll, we'll see that get some legs. I was just reading an article this morning about it's amazing what is out there right now around this subject, very timely, uh, about how states are really trying to do legislatures. And I know we have a legislator, uh, Noel Campbell, here this morning. And what they're trying to do, how they can possibly get us out of Common Core, are limit what can be done through Common Core. So, so yes, there's some good. Uh, these are, I decided to save a tree. I have all of the Common Core standards on my iPad at home. And so I copied some. I decided to save a few trees and, and not copy them all. Um, this is just for the language arts for third through fifth grade. And there's some good standards in here. Yes. In fact, a lot of mathematics standards um, emulate our standards. McCallum, who worked on the Common Core standards, also worked on the Arizona academic standards. So my point is, we can make our standards better than these standards, and they're ours. These common core standards are copyrighted, and they belong to, they are owned by CCSSO and the National Coverage Association. These Arizona standards are owned by us, or they were. There's just a better way. So the, the good and common core, yeah, there's some good standards. Sure, they, they look just like ours, many of them. So we need to make sure that our standards, though, are our standards and not national common core standards. So the good is, yeah, there's some good standards. The bad is that I believe that this is a violation of our state rights. Um, I, I believe that there was a better way. I believe the State Board of Education, when they gave their responsibility away, I think that um, they should be held accountable for that. Um, a couple of other points I'd like to make. One more slide. It's our last slide. Here's the ugly to me. I, I truly believe it was completely unnecessary. I look at the time, the resources that have been devoted to the whole Common Core effort. It was completely unnecessary for Arizona to go down that trail. It is a federalization. Now, I know one of the pieces of that route is that this was not a federal program. It became federalized when the federal government attached money to it. And because they're going to drive this program. And they're not going to stop with language arts and mathematics. They already have science in the work and social studies in the work. So this is a complete takeover of our schooling. And our schooling has always been decentralized. Our schools and our communities are important to us. As a principal, I couldn't decentralize that system as much as I needed to. Um, I, I truly believe that this is a huge mistake for us, and I hope there's one that one that we can untangle this weld and back out of. Um, it's actually illegal. By federal law, the federal government cannot drive or influence curriculum. That is a federal law. And look at the money and the resources that we have taken away from our schools and our teachers. You know, one of the things I've learned after 25 years in education is that we constantly change the target. We're constantly jumping on the new bandwagon. What can we do different? That didn't work, what can we do now? Standards are not learning. We need to focus on highly qualified teachers in every classroom, giving them the resources they need, having our parents understand how important it is for them to participate in education, there are so many ways that we can help our schools if we tell them what it is we expect them to know at a local level and get the heck out of their way and let them get their job done. But I believe a piece that's uh, is passed out is the requirements that we put on our schools are just so overburdening. And, and to me, this Common Core is just more of a burden and, and I, think, I truly believe it's a mistake and I hope that we can move away from it. Thank you very much. But one, one last thing. Uh, I have a, a column that I wrote for 
the daily courier, and we're going to pass it out. It's, it's basically talking about common sense solutions to the common core conundrum. And that is that we bring forth our Arizona academic standards, that we make them the best that they can be in the nation, and that we stay on top of them and we change them, we update them. Um, and, and, you know, Doug Ducey was just elected, will be sworn in on Monday, and Diane Douglas as well. And part of their platform was that they was to do what they could to back us out of Common Core. Thank you very much.